Hello, my name is Soman Vermani. My name is Claire, and I'm Indy. And we're here to talk to you today about this pink crystalline structure that you see. So this is actually by the artist Peter Alexander, and he grew up in Newport Beach, California, and originally intended to become an architect. So he went to architecture school. But coming to art, he actually became a contemporary American sculptor, so kind of combining architecture and art. And he was a part of the light and space movement in Southern California. And he's not a very prominent name of the movement because his work varies. He actually later in his career worked on 2D works. But to talk about the light and space movement overall, it was a movement in art where a lot of artists in Southern California worked with geometric abstraction, minimalism, and uh, materials, transparent, translucent, and reflective. And with resin, Peter Alexander wanted to create sculptures that viewers became immersed in. And in this one, we're playing with light and reflection and reflection. Yeah, and so Peter Alexander's interest in um, resin actually first began when he started experimenting with the material to repair his surfboard. And so the material resin was first discovered by an aerospace industry. And so Alexander began experimenting with resin to create 3D sculptures. But then around the early 1970s, um, it posed a health concern. So he stopped using resin to create 3D sculptures and instead he turned to 2D art. And so his, a lot of his 2D artwork actually uses the light concepts, which he learned from creating his 3D artwork sculptures. And so this includes, you know, um, moonlight, sunlight, dark absorption, total darkness, um, city light, and more. This particular piece by Peter Alexander was created in 1968, and it actually has no name, so it's untitled. And it was created through a process of cast resin in a mold. So he created a mold and then poured resin into it and cast this beautiful sculpture. And then he proceeded to sand down the outside to create an illusion of no blemishes and perfect minimalism that goes along with the light and space movement. And he wanted to create this sculpture that casts light with resin rather than depicting an outside source of light. So he sanded everything down. And now let's get into the key physics topics. And we're gonna focus on refraction. Now if you look here at this diagram of a paintbrush in water, you can see that in the water, the paintbrush looks magnified and a little warped, it's bent near the bottom and it's kind of sloping at an angle. Well, this is all a symptom of refraction. And actually, thinking of water, if you can remember being in a swimming pool with your friend, and if you look at their arm under the water, it may look really, really different. But what's actually happening is that when light, as we know it, travels in waves, when light goes through different materials, it actually travels at different speeds. And for those math folks out there, there's something called the light refractive index, which is essentially a fraction or a ratio. And the bigger it is, the bigger the difference is between mediums. And so the slower light will be, or the faster light will be in and out that medium. And so what we're seeing here is an example of refraction. Yeah, and so the question we have to ask here at this moment is, if you look at this sculpture, um, it's an image of this pink sculpture right here. If you face it, if you look at it face on, you actually see the marble ground right here, and you would expect to actually see the wall. So the question becomes, what is refracting on this resin surface um, to allow us to see the floor instead of a wall? So here is a diagram of the same sculpture, but from the side. So if we're standing here, like we saw in Claire's image, you can see the floor, which is because light travels from the floor, and since it's going from the less dense medium of the air into the more dense medium of the resin, it sort of bends towards the easiest path. So you can think of it like, if this is a remote control car and this is a carpet, the car would travel along and the right wheels hit first, and the left would continue to travel for a little bit, and then continue into the carpet like, at a different angle that's more to towards the parallel floor. And in this way, Peter Alexander is playing with the light that we're seeing and the way we're interpreting the world around us through resin.